Hey, hi, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, and here I'm in now the, the, the lab, the IoT and AI lab with Marlena. Hey, Marlena, thanks hi. for hosting us today. My pleasure. So tell us a bit about yourself and the lab, real quick. Who are you, what are you doing here? Sure, my name is Marlena Hales. I am a director in business development, and I manage three of the labs that we have worldwide. We okay. have one here in, here in Redmond, Washington, one in Shenzhen, China, and okay. one in Munich, Germany. Awesome. So what's going on in these labs? Yeah, so these labs are actually for our Microsoft customers. These, these labs are designed so that customers can come into the lab okay. and bring in their IoT or AI project. And they can actually work with our team here in the labs and actually accelerate their development of those projects. Got we it. often hear customers tell us they may not have the engineering staff on their team. So these labs really help with the customer's engineering team and our engineering team to help co-develop and unblock the customer's issue. The last okay. thing that we actually have is because we have this lab and all the equipment, the facilities available for our customers, it's all included so that uh, customers can just go from one area to the next and really get a full solution of, of implementing their awesome. ideas. So that's developer, with developers making things work, right? Absolutely. Awesome. We love working with developers and only developers can actually come into the lab. Like no execs. <laughs> <laughs> no, in <laughs> fact, we tell execs if they are coming to the lab, they better be rolling up their sleeves and be coding or else providing some awesome lunches for, for their teams. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So uh, here we have an open space, right? Uh, what's going on in that space here? Yeah, so this is a space where we first do our introductions or our stand up. So okay. in this lab, we are actually able to collaborate with our customers and, and do our daily stand-ups. Daily stand-ups include what are we doing today, what do we got accomplished, are there specific roadblocks that we have. Okay. In addition to this collaboration space, what we do in this lab is enable um, to uh, work with our customers in terms of doing code reviews, doing architecture discussions, doing security and scalability reviews. Okay. And through this experience, we can collaborate with one another and understand, hey, what are some of the things that we need to work on or technical um, services that we need to enable. And so in this lab, that enables that. The other half of the lab is dedicated to actually doing testing of okay. hardware. Okay. So as you can see across the benches there, we actually have oscilloscopes, so we have soldering stations. Okay. Yeah, for companies to actually, if they're bringing in hardware, they can actually do some testing while they're here in the lab. Okay, so I have to go out. So down there we have big, huge monitors with tons of data. So what's going on this side here? Yeah, so this is the May Jameson lab, and this lab is dedicated for AI and machine learning. And what we have uh, for these monitors is um, monitors to work with customers okay. in terms of their data. So if they're interested in bringing a large set of data and using machine learning, we can actually do a couple of different things. We can actually help them clean their data. Mm -hmm. We can actually help them um, put some uh, data models up and create some of those data models, okay. and then create some data dashboards for them. And so through that engagement, customers, while they're bringing in those data sets, mm -hmm. we really can show them how to think about machine learning and apply AI. In addition to this lab, we also can help uh, customers that are interested in cognitive services. As okay. you know, we have many uh, cognitive services available. Mm -hmm. And if they're interested in putting that into their solution, we can help them actually enable that. Got it. So it's not just about educating them about what exists. It's, it's like, hey, let me show you how to use it yourself. In, in this kind of configuration, right? Yeah, it's a custom experience here. So every customer that we have in the lab, we develop our sprints mm -hmm. and our work streams for that specific customer. We want to make sure that when they leave the lab, they can actually have accelerated in terms of development time. They know how to maintain and right. operationalize that, as well as if they uh, need ecosystem partners, mm -hmm. they, we have introduced them to ecosystem of partners that we have here in the lab. That's awesome. So we're saying AI, we talked about a little of IoT here. We're going to talk about more IoT down there, right? Because there's even more toys for customers, right? Absolutely. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, so we are in a place where um, I should wear goggles and, and a hard hat, right? Well, most of the time when customers are in here, that is true. You should wear a hard hat and your, your, uh earbuds too. But today, since we're not going to be turning on any of the equipment, um, we'll just actually <laughs> show you some of what okay. we have. All right? Okay, okay, show me. So this lab is dedicated for customers that want to actually build their devices. Okay. And so customers can either bring in pieces of equipment mm -hmm. or hardware, or they can actually build it in here. And Got we it. have this lab focused on that. So when customers are using this, they can really help uh, build tens to hundreds while they're here in the lab. 
okay. over a week's time, or they can actually send them out to our ecosystem partners. But they tend to want to build them here because there's always some refinement that needs to be made. Okay. So let me ask you, why? So how is that lab making a difference for them? Can they just buy the equipment and just create the same labs? Yeah. So that they could. We actually have a lot of customers that tell us, you know when they're thinking about building this type of equipment or using this type of equipment mm -hmm. to build their specific products, mm -hmm. it's a huge investment. It's a okay. huge investment to build this, this type of lab because of the fact that there are multiple pieces of equipment needed to even build one small device. You'll have PCB board um, a printer, or three, I'm sorry, you'll have PCB board uh, pieces of equipment, you'll have 3D printers, you'll have all the testing equipment. So that's a quite a bit of investment for companies to have to make in order to even prototype a device. Okay. So the, the, the value of coming to a lab like this is you have it all here. You have the machine room, you actually have all the equipment that you can use, you yeah. have the testing equipment that you can use, yeah. and then if you need to make changes, you can do it while you're here in the lab versus sending that out perhaps to a third party mm -hmm. and waiting for two weeks for it to arrive. Yeah, back and forth on the PCBs and hey, you forgot to wrap that. Yes, yeah, exactly. It. So hey, what do we have? Yeah, so we actually have a stencil printer here okay. where customers can actually Excellent. make their own stencils that go into a PCB uh, machine. Okay. And so once they actually made their PCB stencil or make mm -hmm. changes to it while they're here, okay. they can then take it over to a pick and place machine. So we uh -huh. have the full pick and place machine in which we can load Oh, up to 40 components into this pick and place machine and it can be placed into the PCB board. Okay. Example like this. So that's a machine that you see in the movies where it's like boom, boom, putting all the yeah. very precise uh, you know, locations for these uh, the things. Oh, I see an IT Hub uh, sign here. There's a logo for IT Hub on that one. That's great, yeah. That's pretty fun, cool. And so customers can actually load this um, in a matter of a couple minutes. Okay. And what most customers do is then uh, inspect it. And if there's any changes that need to be modified here, okay. you can go to the PCs next door, make the modifications. And, and boom. Move. How long does it take for an, an average PCB like that? Um, less than a minute. Less than a less minute? Less than a minute to actually load. Seriously? I've actually seen it. It takes more time to load the reels oh, than really? it does to actually, <laughs> to actually do the work. To, to do the work on it, yeah, believe so that's, it or not. That's, yeah, I wouldn't even like try and guess the, the price of such a machine. But yeah, yeah, that's quite exciting. Well, and, and back in the day, they, you used to have to do this by hand. So imagine trying to do this by hand. And ruin your eyes. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. So once that is, is done, we also have the refill oven that finishes the essential mm -hmm. step of the PC board, adheres it to the board, and then again, going to the next part of the lab to actually do the inspection of that. Cool, so the proof concept iteration is like, it's instant, right? It's Exactly, exactly. And so customers, when they come here, they can do three or four of these a day because if there's changes, modifications, build it mm -hmm. and then test it next door. If there's a modification, change, do that again. So they can do that many times in okay. a day or a week's time. Yeah, one thing we didn't mention is that actually people who are working here with you in the lab, they know how to use these machines. So sometimes customers will not, not, might not be you know, uh, very familiar with these. They can also benefit from professionals who actually can handle those machines. Yeah, all of our engineers are professionals. They come from industry. They know how to use all the equipment here. They actually um, work with every one of our customers along their journey while they're here. Awesome. We have some magic 3D printers as well down there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we have uh, multiple 3D printers here in the lab. Okay. We have uh, ProJet printers. We have Quick Prints as well as uh, this Carbon 3D printer where uh, if a customer wants to do higher fidelity types of yeah. print jobs, multiple types of um, materials can be loaded in this carbon 3D. And once they actually do a print job here, mm -hmm. there are other carbon printers located around the world. And what okay. they can do is then go locally, bring their, their files that they've done here, and know that they can go to the next carbon 3D and actually print the same type of print right. job. Exact same fidelity and, and, and oh. Yeah. That's not your grandma's 3D printer, right? No, it's, it's like not. <laughs> you don't have to modify or anything, but once you print one here, you can go to the next one yeah. to do that. Can you show some of the things that have been 3D printed? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
so what we have here are several examples of 3D print jobs um, from very early stages in terms of quick 3D print jobs. Mm -hmm. We have ones here that is showing essentially a Raspberry Pi um, here. Case, yeah, case, or box. Case, yeah. and then this shows an example of a Raspberry Pi case where it's color. So a lot of our customers want to see what that color looks like, how it looks like once you put the, the drill holes in there. And what they'll do is they'll actually load their components in here with all the pieces okay. in there. And then, of course, as you can imagine, it never fits the first time. So they get to actually... It's right and make it work. But they so to basically come out of here was an actual product, right? They do. They do. They go through this to get to more higher fidelities in terms of, of, of materials like this that feel okay. just like you were to buy, right? It feels nice. like yeah, it feels the final. Final, right? Yeah. Or if they want to get into more industrial types of products, we have the mill that actually mm. can do metal. We have customers nice. that are building products that are going outside. So an example like this would go outside where there's humid or high heat. This mm -hmm. actually can sustain that, as well as super high fidelity intrinsic pieces like this. <laughs> Pretty detailed, right? That's 3D printed. Yeah. Like so it's see through. That's yeah, awesome. small, and you can see there's multiple layers in there too. So high fidelity, small, and we can do large print jobs too, but you know, we have different options for our customers here. Cool. Okay, so basically customers come in, like they talk to you about the project they're working on. They already did some things, but they are very beginning stages. And after what, a week or two, they come out with an actual product that does everything from sensors all the way up to AI and predictive maintenance and so on, right? That is right. That's this cool. is pretty rad. And so we'll add a link. There's a link where people can, customers can actually learn more about the lab. And uh, well, that was a fantastic visit. Thanks a lot, Marlena. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys.